guys, and welcome to Trucking Along with Kiersey. That's me, your positive voice in trucking. Today, we are going to tackle the 8-2 split, 7-3 split. It's not that bad, guys. <laughs> I am going to explain the rules and how it works. I'm going to explain to you when and why I use it. And at the very end, I'm also going to tell you about a DOT violation. A lot of people don't even realize that they're getting unless they're stopped by an officer and inspected. The Qualcomm unit will not tell them that they're in violation. So you may actually think you're compliant because you don't understand how the split works. You could actually be in violation. No lie, I found this out from an officer. If you feel like this and you want to feel like this, then keep watching this video. Warning, warning, warning. Do not try this until you understand your hours of service. A lot of new people don't even understand the whole hours of service and how it works and how recaps work. So if you're trying to understand this and work it, it might not work out well. Do it when you have a lot of time on a load that you're definitely not going to mess up because I don't want to be responsible for you screwing something up. <laughs> She'll be like, this, you'd be telling dispatch, Kirsty told me to do this. No, 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 I didn't. <laughs> so what is the 8273 sleeper birth rule? What does that split do? What it does is it breaks your 10-hour break into two separate segments. The only way to completely reset your clock is to do a full 10. You are never going to actually fill your 11 hour clock and your 14 completely unless you do a full 10 hour break. You cannot do the split and expect to get 11 hours on your drive time. It's not going to work like that. The two breaks have to be a minimum of two hours and then a minimum of eight in the sleeper. And they have to be complete straight breaks. You cannot interrupt them. So it has to be two straight hours of off duty or sleeper. The eight hour would have to be eight in the sleeper. Same thing goes with the seven three. It would have to be three hours of off duty or sleeper. And then a minimum of seven hours sleeper continuous. And you can do them in any order. You could do the 3-7, you could do the 7-3, you could do the 2-8, you could do the 8-2. Now, I have a Qualcomm, I have Omnichat, uh, I have Omnitrax on my Qualcomm. Whether you have Keep Trucking or Zonar or PeopleNet, there's going to be something on your, on your unit that says, will pair or use sleeper birth it might say you as uh, like use sb for sleeper birth mine says will pair sb for sleeper birth you check that and i'm going to show you some examples of if you don't check it you could be in the negative but if you check it boom here comes your your hours even after you check it your 14 hour clock will keep ticking down until you get that minimum of two hours off duty off duty or sleeper. One thing that really seems to confuse people is how many hours do I get back after the breaks? It amazes me that we could put a man on the moon, swim to the depths of the ocean, and nobody can explain to us how to freak to use this 8273 split. It's 11 hours that you have on your drive clock. Whatever you drove between the two breaks, you subtract that from 11 hours. So if you took two hours of off duty or sleeper and then you drive six hours then you take eight in the sleeper at the end it's 11 minus six which would be five hours you would get after the eight in the sleeper on this first example consecutive hours in the sleeper which is on the left hand side it says duration eight hours up top there's three minutes left on the clock that's because I killed the 14 by sitting there so long. And on the right hand side, it says will pair SB for will pair sleeper birth. Now, this is an Omnitrax on my Qualcomm. 
you may have Keep Trucking, you may have PeopleNet or Zonar. All of the same information is going to be located somewhere in your system. The sleeper berth, even though I did eight hours, it did not pause my clock automatically. It's not until I hit the will pair and check that off. You can put a little check mark. When I check that off, it will uh, credit me back my time. So on this second screen, this is the summary screen, you can see... Why is it say two minutes now? Because my 14 hour clock was still ticking down from the time I took that last picture. So I have two minutes left on my 14. And then on the left hand side, you see that that graph is my 14 hour clock has been decimated. And then two minutes on the right where it's circled. If you look right above that though, my 11 hour drive clock was five hours and 53 minutes. So on this next slide, I did. I got my 5 hours and 53 minutes back. Why? All I did was check that will pair sleeper berth. If you take a break for more than 2 hours, you will pause your 14 hour clock and you will be credited with whatever time you went in and started that, that break. Okay, I apologize for the shakiness of this video. If you look at the top, I had negative 43 minutes. When I check the will pair button, there's a message that pops up that says will pair SB. You will be in violation if you do not follow the requirements for the sl splitting sleeper berth. Now I'm going to discuss this at the end of the video because this is really important. After I hit that button, I got back three hours. And on this, on this graph here that I'm pointing to now, you can see that I was actually in the in the sleeper berth for four and a half hours so you don't need seven full hours in the sleeper or eight full hours in the sleeper first okay however i did four and a half hours i can't just turn around and say okay five and a half hours will then make a 10 hour break the way the splits work, it has to be seven, three, or eight, two. So because I did a minimum of three, I can then do seven in the sleeper berth later. Okay, in this example, I have four hours and 38 minutes on my clock. I then checked the will pair sleeper berth. It gave me the warning about the violation. I wound up with seven hours and 29 minutes on my clock. When I went to the summary screen, you can see it now extended my 14 hour clock. So what I have available is seven hours, 29 minutes to drive. There was a little bit of time behind that, but I'd have to take a half hour break to get that because of the eight hour rest break clock. And I'll do another video about the separate clocks because I want to keep this as an eight two split video. Say we did seven hours in the sleeper on our first break. We drive five hours. You take a three hour minimum on the second break. That's 11 minus five equals six. You'd have six hours to drive after. You can also do these back to back. If you took seven in the sleeper and then you drove for four hours and then you did three hours of off duty, so you'd have 11 minus the four, which would leave you seven hours after you completed the second break in the 7-3 split. But if you turned around and did another seven in the sleeper, it would calculate the first three hours, then you drove seven hours, now you take three hours, it's 11 minus seven that you drove between the two breaks, which equals four. You can keep rolling it like this. Why would you use this and when and when do I use it and why do I use it? In the beginning, I used these a lot. I would get to the customer so far ahead of time that I'd have eight full hours that I could stay in the sleeper. Then I would have time to go and drive into the customer, get unloaded, and then after I got unloaded, guess what? Now I just completed the 8-2 split because I was in the dock for more than two hours, so I had almost a full clock to roll out with. I was using them in situations where I didn't have a full 10 hour break before I went into the customer. I also used it, we talk about flipping the clocks. It's a 24 hour job, we don't really have a schedule, but I was using them to try to get myself back on a schedule that I liked. I prefer driving at night. 
So I would go in the sleeper during the day, which would then flip my clock back to where I wanted it to be, and I could drive at night. I also used them for parking situations. Say I was going to deliver in Atlanta. I drive five hours, and I'm getting closer to Atlanta. The parking's starting to fill up. I would stop and do the eight and the sleeper then, and then I could leave out. And what would I have? Because I drove five hours. I went in the sleeper for eight hours. I'd have exactly what I stopped with. So coming out of the sleeper, I would have six hours to drive. Um, so I used it for parking situations. Sometimes it was just, hey, I'm exhausted and I want a nap. So I would stop and I'd stop. Like I just go stop and park and go take a nap for a couple hours and then get up and run. And a lot of times customers, being in reefer, we're sitting in the docks all the time. So we go into the customer. We could be sitting there for four or five hours. You know, do I want that to be wasted time or could I add that? Can I just run after I leave and then add the seven and the sleeper to keep me going? I use it a lot to have the customer prevent me from being late to the receiver. But again, you ask a hundred truckers how to do something. If you tell a hundred truckers to pick up from LA to deliver in Jersey, you're going to have a hundred different places that they stop, a hundred different routes that they take. You know, everybody's going to have different ways that they drive. So one way to, you know, utilize this 8-2 is to make it yours. Make it yours. But remember, minimum of two hours, you have to do a minimum of eight in the sleeper. Minimum of three hours off duty or sleeper, you have to do a minimum of seven. Seven in the sleeper. When it comes to DOT violations, a lot of people don't understand. There is a message that says not completing this sleeper birth break may, call, may put you in violation. Guess what? A lot of people think, okay, I'm going to go pause my clock for three hours. I'm going to do seven in the sleeper later. And then guess what happens? If you wind up say, okay, you know what? My truck broke down now and I'm going to go get a hotel room for the night. Now I'm taking a 10 hour break. That 10 hour break does not count as the seven in the sleeper. It makes no sense because you're off for 10 hours, but you have to do seven hours of that 10 in your sleeper or you're technically in violation. I mean, this is something that I had no idea because the Qualcomm doesn't let you know that, you know, you don't actually get any reports from the logs department or anything. However, a D DOT officer inspected one of my friends, told him, hey, you have an, a violation, and he's actually one of my subscribers, too. Um, and what happened was he paused his, his 14 by hitting the will pair button, and he was on off-duty for more than the minimum of two hours. And then when he shut down... He wound up being close enough to home that he was able to go home and take a 34 at home. Even though he had a full 34, it technically violated him because he did not complete that split. He had to have the seven or the eight hours or whatever he required in the sleeper, which makes no sense. But these are the rules, so figured I'd let you know. <laughs> Now that you understand how the sleeper split works, make sure you celebrate and then you share this out with all your friends so that they can like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. I hope this video helped you and if you would please consider subscribing, ring that notification bell, and then check out my couple videos over here because I've worked really hard on trying to answer all the questions that new drivers have. 
And I'm always here for you guys, so if you want to hit me up on the email, I respond to every email, I respond to every comment. It, most of the time, I respond to questions. Uh, sometimes I have to get on the laptop to see the comments. But, um, but if you need help, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. And I've been in the situation that you've been. If you're new and you're scared or you're nervous, I've been there. And if my videos have helped you, I really do appreciate the support. It's great. If you're planning on coming to Prime, use my driver code, which is R-O-T-W-K-I. That's R-O-T-W-K-I. You can go down below and click on the application link, and it will give me a referral. So I appreciate that. And if you happen to be in Springfield, then stop by and see me, because I hope to see you out here. Chuck, chuck, chuck along. Bye. <laughs>